Good more uh it's good afternoon to everyone because it's twelve fifteen, I think. Yeah. So I'm talking about automotive security bugs explained for bug hunters. And it's more on an initiative to promote uh people to hack for cars and also to know uh how we prioritize bugs for cars or automotive. So my name is Jay Turla. Uh, that's my handle. And they tell me that my name is Jay Kan Shikri from Singham because I've seen that movie, my Indian friends. So I work as a sec ops manager for Bug Crowd and in my, uh, as a hobby and as a fellow hacker, uh, I also help organize RootCon in the Philippines. Uh, and then, um, also the CFP review board. So I see a lot of submissions from different hackers as well. Their research and also some good Indian security research. So Indians are really close to my heart because I have a lot of friends. They are, uh, in the, in this field. And also, uh, I'm not the author of Purla Malware. I, I'm pretty sure that you guys heard. Uh, I'm not even Russian. I'm Filipino. So just so you know. Yeah. So I also organized the Car Hacking Village. I had the Car Hacking Village in Asia and also in Rutkan. And I have a friend also who is good in car hacking in India. His name is Arun Mani and I thank him for bringing me here actually. So I'm also, uh, I love contributing to security tools. Uh, you might have seen some of the uh, modules I've created for Metasploit. And I've also uh, contributed some Metasploit modules related to car hacking. And I am your bi. I don't know if I pronounced it right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, why why car hacking? Uh, oh yes, I forgot. I'm from Kida Crowd. If I, that's right, right? Yeah. Bug Crowd, the Kida Crowd. And then it's car hacking is fun. It's really fun. There's a good com community. Uh, there's a good community in DEF CON, uh, in other countries as well. In fact, in India, you also have a car hacking village as well from Aaron Mani, the guy from, is the founder of Amina Tech. And because car hacking is, we use it every day, right? We want to ensure that we are safe, uh, from attackers or total takeover. Uh, the good thing about cars is that it also has a lot of attack services. So when you say attack services, it's your point of entry. Take for example, in a house, there are like two doors. And then that's what the thief, uh, sees, right? But a hacker, he also sees the when, uh, the windows as attack, uh, an entry point. Okay. So basically, uh, in Bug Crowd, we have my other computer is your computer, but for cars, uh, my other computer is your car's computer. Because cars are like, uh, they have infotainment systems and it's like buying a very expensive computer. Yeah. So, car hacking bug bashes pay well. Uh, we have launched, uh, bug bashes for cars. And the good thing is that if you're into IoT security, uh, you could, you could, uh, even though you don't know about CAN bus, you could actually hack car, uh, hack the infotainment systems or other gateways for cars. Take for example the telematics, uh, the uh, infotainment, the one that you can see from your dashboard. Okay. So yep. In the uh, last year, we actually paid uh, 224,000 USD uh, bug bounties just for cars. Okay. And if you want to start about car hacking, uh, please don't. Uh, don't forget about this book. It's the Car Hacker's Handbook. You just need to search for Google and it, uh, the online version is free. And if you want to buy the paperback, it's, it costs like $25 or $15, I'm not sure. But if you get like humble bundle, uh, you can have a lot of books together with it. So, and if you see, if you have a paperback and if you see Craig Smith, uh, from any other conference, you could let him sign the book at least.
So that's Craig Smith. Uh, that was this was Root Consult. So our, our conference exists for like 14 years already, and um, that's him talking, keynoting, and we gave him some shots. So it's in the Philippines, you get a lot of shots if you do speaking. And then in his book, these are the most common attack surfaces. So I'm just talking about. Uh, I'll just talk about. The known bugs, for example, cellular, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, TPMS, or the tire pressure monitoring system of the car. Uh, you have the KES. And then for internal, when you say internal, that's the thing that you can see inside of the car. So you have the infotainment, the nav console, so everything that you can touch to like interact with the navigation, those are internal. So you have the USB as an attack surface as well. I'll show you a demo. And then you have the OBD2 connector. So by default, OBD2 connectors are uh, at the down. Uh, I mean, in the steering wheel, it's under under the steering wheel. So OBD means onboard diagnostics. And actually, uh, this is a sample of it. So say, for example, you could if you have a ELM327, which allows you to do basic diagnostics, you can put uh, you can put it in the OBD2. So it could also be near your handbrake. Uh, yeah, it depends actually on the car. But for most modern cars that I've seen, it's usually under the steering wheel. And come to think of it, OBD2 is internal, right? And it travels on CAN bus. The transmission, there's CAN bus in that. So how do we attack the car if we're outside the car? There are many ways. You could sniff, uh, the key fob attack, K, K fob, or you could rip off some of the brake lights or your sensors. And if you just use a multitester and then find 1.1.5 volts, you can see that there's CAN bus transmission. So, yeah, those are the uh, things that you can see on a modern car. So you have telematics, uh, you have HVAC keyless entry. So it's getting, uh, it's getting. Um, all this very famous right now. I mean, it's a trend right now. It's keyless entry. So, uh, to, I can't see, I can't say a car manufacturing company where there was a time in the Philippines during the 2000, uh, every Toyota, uh, every Toyota car that, um, that has this, uh, key fob. I can't say what, what, who is the maker of that key fob. I mean, not the car manufacturer, but, if you push the key fobs together, uh, you can actually uh, cause uh, or you get duplication of each key fob. Key fob. That was like early 2000. Before. So thus, you have access to someone's car and your car as well. So there's no explanation how was that because that was that that was like 2000, but they have that issue before. So in bug crowd. Or we, we, we actually open source this one as well. It's in GitHub. So we created a rating. I was, uh, it's my friend and also Dax Labrador and I created a classification or rating for, uh, car bugs or automotive security bugs. And as what you can see, uh, there's infotainment. So you say infotainment, if you can do a P2 leakage, uh, basically it's a, uh, P1 issue, because it's all about privacy issue, right? And then from there, the RF hub, if you could do key fob cloning, like for example, the same key and you can clone that one. So basically, that's also a P1. So let's say, uh, RF hub, the radio frequency hub. Okay. And then if you have infotainment, uh, you could do code execution and then you could pivot to CAN bus. So that's something that we reward us. P2 as well. And if you don't have CAN bus, um, CAN bus pivot, it's just that you're able to execute something locally, then that's something we really reward as a P3 issue. But don't get me wrong. Okay. We, we all know as bug hunters that we have remote code execution and command injection as P1, right? But it's because with just hacking the infotainment, and for example, if that infotainment is on a sandbox ECU, and you can't take over the car. There's no use, right? 
it's just the infotainment that you were able to attack. Yeah. So basically, if you can take over the car and then through the infotainment, you could actually land to P1 because that's bypassing the authentication mechanism supposed to be. You're not allowed to do so. So Charlie Miller and Chris Velasek, so since 2018, uh, almost all FTA vehicles, uh, they have firewalls. They're called as security gateways. You can't just spoof messages if you don't have the right, uh, the right seed key. So, but if you, you're, you're able to crack the seed key for the car, you can actually get a reward for that as well. There are a lot of bypasses. So you can't just spoof your, uh, you can't just cause an overflow for a car if there is gateway, but there is a way to bypass them. There are a lot of bypasses. Say, for example, firehouse attack, can probing, can quad. So it's, it's up to you how you do that actually. So, yeah, I've seen that one from Google. So the banana guy, right? <laughs> so basically, like I said, if you could bypass the firewall for security gateways of a car, uh, you get a P1. That's a very critical issue. Okay, so, so firewall, like I said, since 2018, it's not easy to hack car. Okay, but it can still easily, uh, it can still be hacked, just not that easy, because you need to brute force or do some creative attack. Uh, there was this one test bench where I was able to reset the ECU, but when I tried it on a on the car itself, because there was no security gateway on the test bench of that same model. And the, my attack doesn't work. So that's one of the things that this, the security gateway or firewall protects. So if you could flash or program the ECU by bypassing the security gateway or firewall, so you are also uh, bypassing something or you are also, um, so that you can be rewarded for a good amount. Because you are not supposed to do that, okay? But back to the, uh, back in the days, you could actually do that, even Canva. Uh, I mean, even on OBD2. So you shouldn't be able to spoof. That's the thing. And then there are other Android or iOS app vulnerabilities. So it varies. So take for example, if your car has a uh, an endpoint or an Android app where it allows you to uh, control your car, and if you find in that endpoint that you are able to, uh, to call this turning off other cars, so that's something that we reward. There was an issue before in Nissan Leaf, wherein uh, it was Troy Hunt and his friend. He wrote an article about it. So basically, he has an app for Nissan Leaf. Nissan Leaf is an electric car. Uh, he just tried to use burp and then intercepted the request and the responses. And then he was able to see an end, an endpoint wherein, uh, it's patched now. So don't worry. Don't be afraid. But basically, if you know uh, there's a certain parameter which calls the VIN number of the car. And because the Nissan Leaf has telematics 4G connection, basically, if you just know the VIN number of other cars, you can turn off your car or turn on the car. So that's how scary it is. And when you say VIN number, you can just look it up, right? On the car. So if there's a window in the car and this, you just see, you can see the VIN number. Right. So it's not the VIN number that's vulnerable. It's the endpoint itself. So VINs are public records. Uh, there's been a debate if, if it should be public or private. And then web vulnerabilities connected to the cloud. Uh, Telematics, firmware update server. So for example, if your car has over the air update and then you connect your car to Wi-Fi and then you try to sniff it, sniff on it while it's updating the server and it's on HTTP, for example. So maybe you could modify the firmware on the plan. So that's something that we also reward and it varies. So it's probably that on that endpoint, there are, there's a web server. And what if there's SQL injection? There's a server side request forgery. So it's up to you. Just refer to OWASP mobile top 10 methodology and 
you know, hack from there. So it's not just about the hardware itself. You need to look deeper. So uh, I have some insights on common vulnerabilities. So don't mind the meme. That was a fight between Philippine team of basketball in Australia. So yeah, it's how we got banned in FIBA before. Yeah. So um, one thing is that there's this infotainment DOS through format string vulnerability, which we could classify from my own perspective as P4. So in bug crowd, we have P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. And, we just, and if it's P5, it means it's a best practice, missing best practice. If it's a P4, it's a low vulnerability, but we still pay for that, okay? P3, P2, P1, P1 is the highest. So this means that if you could create a DOS out of, uh, if you could cause a DOS for your infotainment, say this guy, so a CVE 2009212, uh, there was this guy who tested his BMW, he named his phone, because you can name your phone, or you could also like upload, I mean, upload an MP3 file to your phone and then play it to your car through Bluetooth. So you could like person X, person C, so a lot of that you can traverse. And then after that, after he connected to his phone through Bluetooth, uh, he bricked his infotainment. And I'm not sure what happened to his infotainment, but he told me that he actually needs to go to the shop to have it replaced. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, this is very risky. And we used to have this bug bash wherein we also brick some of the devices. And we also have this experience wherein someone was fuzzing a lot of things on the CAN bus. And on the end of the day, the car doesn't run anymore. It turns on, but it run, uh, it doesn't run. So there are things like that. So be careful. In this case, be careful. You can't play your favorite song anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So this is my car. It's a Mazda 2 Sports. Uh, basically, uh, infotainment default credentials, uh, can be an issue sometimes for car manufacturers, but sometimes it's not. Okay. So maybe you could try to brute force or maybe acquire it through other ways. So you need to know the default password and there, that's your attack surface. Or you could also like, you know, um, connect through SSH from that. So you just need to connect your car to your Wi-Fi router and then fetch the DHCP IP address, then do an end map to see what are the services. Then from that services, try to check if you could actually uh, log in or, you know, use Netcat. So in here, you can see that the Mazda is running on SSH. There's an SSH service from a, from the infotainment, and the default password is JCI, JCI. But sometimes they don't care, sometimes they do, okay? Basically, uh, you could also, this from the same infotainment from my car. So if you could, uh, if you could do this, then you could also be rewarded for doing command injection. So no CAN bus pivot, because there's no CAN bus. When you say CAN bus pivot, it means that you will, you are able to interact with a CAN protocol. So cars communicate with their controllers and microprocessors, the ECU itself, through the CAN protocol. And it's not just the CAN protocol. There are a lot of protocols involved. So I'll show you. I have the PLC. Um, so. Forgive my, um, forgive me if I don't have license for PowerPoint because um, I just downloaded it. I'm still waiting for the IP to give me. But anyways, it's not pirated. Don't worry. Anyways, um, here's the chicken and me playing a song. So yeah, that's a Mazda, and then. I just cloned the PLC that I wrote for Mazda, and it's not that visible, right? But anyways, I'm that's my flash drive, yeah. And then I insert it to my USB, uh, USB port of my car, and then wait. So it recognized my car. Don't mind the chicken; he's just chilling. So basically. We just need to move forward because it takes time. But uh, here, here, uh, there. 
we'll see that the USB port is an attack surface. Uh, we need to move forward and then it, there. After that, uh, executed the command rename space when it's a at the PLC. And there. So I'm the reason why Mazda patched their cars for the infotainment actually. So if you could, and then you go, you go deeper, you then interact with the can, you could get rewarded higher than P3. So like I said, it's not just about CAN bus. Right. So like I said, ECU resets bypassing the security gateway is a P1. So basically if you could reset the ECU or the electronic control unit, uh, you could um, you could get a very good reward. It's most likely like 25,000 USD just for that bug, or 30,000. So Chris Vlasek and Charlie Miller has a book about advanced can injection attacks, which could help. And that's the link. Don't worry, I'll share the slide. Don't worry. So the guys from Keen Labs, pretty sure you, who, who has heard of these guys? They're one of the best. So basically, um, they were able to exploit the Wi-Fi stack on a Tesla model, the infotainment as well. So basically, we from a, from a bug uh, from a bug bounty program perspective, it's usually P3, but I want to lean to P2 because it's a really good research. Okay, so there's a reference there, and they were able to get a shell by just attacking the Wi-Fi stack on an infotainment. So yeah. It could also be upgraded as a P1, so I'm getting very, uh, very, uh, jealous of them or, you know, like, leaning. Uh, one of, one of the guys is actually a researcher I, I met in Hong Kong last December. Don't worry, there was no coronavirus during that time yet. So yeah. I've been to Hong Kong, it's very near to my country. So, yeah. Uh, these guys, Charlie Miller and Chris Velasquez, you know, and they really uh, did a lot of good attacks. So when you say about car hacking, they're the reason why uh, why Jeep or FCA, Fiat Chrysler, patch their system. Then we'll have demo time from, that's from, <laughs> yeah, very good. So before we start our demo, uh, these are the prerequisites. So this is what you call an instrument cluster. Okay. Still on, right? And then, yeah, I have NanoCan. For just $5, you can create your tool already. Uh, I have some PCBs actually still here. I can give it to you guys. And then I have Contact, STM32 Can Sniffer, and then I have Value Can 4. But for this demo, I'm not sure how... Uh, my STM32 doesn't work now. I'm not sure why, but let's try later. Some tools. Yeah. There is a link in there. Yeah. Yeah. Illuminati hack. You have to hack. Yeah. Basically, you could also start with the car hacking tools here. And, you know, clone the machine. Uh, or you could get, use get. Yeah, you can take pictures. Great. And then you could also use Metasploit. There are a lot of modules for Metasploit actually. So, oh, the chicken is here again. Anyways, uh, I've written a module for Mazda 2. That's my favorite car. So, I hope they don't get me to jail for that. But anyways, um, there's a script that I wrote, which allows you to just connect your CAN interface to Metasport and then uh, fuzz it. So just, in, if you open Metasploit, just use the keyword search automotive, okay? And you can see a lot of post modules once you have the uh, hardware bridge session of your CAN pack or your CAN device. So, okay, no wait. So I have a, 
I have a demo, live demo here. The problem is I can't show you the traffic behind it, but anyways. It's moving, right? So you can see it's moving. So I'm supposed to demo how you can like, you know, fuss it a lot, but I don't know what happened to my device. I need, I, I think I need to flash my device. But anyways, uh, take for example, this is a normal working of a car and you try to send a lot of messages. So for just, you know, a $5 tool, you just need Arduino Nano and MCP2515 to like fuzz something from your car. So please don't fuzz random messages to your car or else you'll, you know, you'll do a lot of damage. By the way, Metasploit module has a, uh, has a module that allows you to test the airbags. But please don't try this at home. Yeah. Anyways, um, I'm not sure what happened, but because I'm supposed to send data through CANDOM, but it's not working right now. But let me just try, uh, CanGen. Is it moving? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, no, that's not, that, that's the normal way. But it's still a fuzzing. But, you know, it didn't, uh, do some other stuff. But, I don't know what happened. Yeah. But it's okay, at least we get to know that we can actually fuzz something. Right? Yeah, sad to say, I, I can't. But here's the actual demo of it, actually. I, re good thing I recorded the video. So this is what you call, uh, can in the middle. So this is what I'm supposed to demo, actually. Okay, so when you do a can dump, this is free. You just need to use the can utils. And that's my tool. And then I'm doing a man in the middle using Cantac. And that's what it did. Alright? Like that. So you're trying to mess up something. Uh, you're not supposed, you, you shouldn't be able to do this if there's a firewall. Okay? You shouldn't be able. But because I just, you know, yeah, use some wires, figure out the pins. Okay? And, you know, 16 pin is actually 12 volts. That 18 pin is ground, and 14 and 15 is can high and can low. There are a lot of attacks that you can do aside from this. And this is from my master as well. This is the Metasploit module I created. But anyway, it should look like this. Using Arduino Nano, and then I probe, I coded my Nano to send messages through Canva. So yeah, that's from a Mazda. I love the cluster so much from Mazda. It's really a good cluster. So yeah, there are a lot of things that you can do. I mean, this is just a proof of concept that you could do these things by sniffing or sending messages to a car through a CAN bus. So it's not just ex internally, externally. Uh, there was this one researcher where he was able to open the car because he opened one of the sensors. Okay, so imagine one of the uh, burglars are keep doing that, getting advanced, because it already happened in the U.S., wherein they tried to intercept the, uh, you know, the key fob as well. Anyways, I'm open to questions now, so let me know if you have questions. Yeah, sure. What was it again? Oh, um, you mean can injection through DOS or? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Can you go? Uh, do you have mic mic for this so that I can yeah, like you know? Like, uh, there are some, uh, fault injections and glitch attacks which are run on the UDS protocol of the UDS. 
Yes, Yuria. to break the authentication of the UDS. So have you tried like any of these things? Or you... Yeah, but we, I can't disclose it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I triage bugs for bug crowd. I use, okay. uh, I'm a triad. I'm a triager, and I've seen those kind of attacks as well, and also dead UDS fuzzing as well. Okay, so, so what kind of like tools are there? Can you just tell? Uh, sometimes you can use Python can, and then use Isotop module, and then you can break the seed key from there. I can't show the POC for that. I'm so sorry. We have NDA, but yes, okay. there. Uh, we I also tried where we did ECU resets as well through the cold injections. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We did. We did uh, also a um, lot of things actually, but I can't. I'm only discussing the POC because you know I don't want to get fired. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hi. Where this side. Where are you? Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Pratmesh. So I run a tech company in Indore. They, so we have developed telematics solutions. Okay. So uh, it's completely based on IoT protocols. Yeah. So I'm, my question is uh, around protocols basically. A lot of trackers and GPS trackers they works on HTTP protocol, right? That's Most right. of the Chinese trackers in India they also work on that. Don't say that. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, sorry. So, so uh, our protocol. Uh, so we use MQTT. So, is there any protocol suggestions which you could uh, give us, uh, which we can explore or add to our product? You mean uh, how to secure it? Yeah, I mean, whatever your perspective would be. Sad thing is, I don't know how. <laughs> I mean, I I just know about offensive. Thanks for this one, but I think one thing that you that I could actually suggest is implement a security gateway. Maybe that's one of the things as well. It protects radio hub attacks as well Got for it. security gateway. But that's security. the only thing that I know. Other from going in depth, I can't really share my exper uh, expertise. Maybe some people could help you, but uh, Bosch has really a good idea about that That one. And also Lear Corporation. Sorry? Lear Corporation. Lear Corporation. Lear, 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 uh, do you have office here in Lear? Right? Lear Corporation in India? I think Bangalore. Okay, well, yeah. they they have good. They're even their engineers are even using a security tool for testing their car. They use Hanu. It's a very expensive tool. Hanu, Hanu. Uh, so basically, the most common enterprise tools for testing against CAN bus hacking, and also um, other protocols. Uh, you have Hanu and Vehicle Spy. Yeah, Vehicle Spy. And pendant. Sure. Hi. Hello. I have one question. So, like, if uh, as you talk about the issue, like you can control it. So, if I'm able to uh, build a solution with IDS and IPS on ECU, how much secure will be? Do you think the there will be at least eighty or six ninety percent production for the car? Is it like very? How, how much is the? Uh, yeah. Is it a good solution to have IDS IPS on ECU, or is it fine? So uh, basically, there's IDS. Uh, I've I've heard from one of my friends, the founder of Car Hacking Village. Uh, there's already an IDS, and it's not yet, you know, uh, big in the market right now. But if you could do that, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get rich. <laughs> Actually, a uh, few years back, I was working with Bosch, so they had Bosch. Yeah, Ethos okay. was working uh, and implementing this IDS IPS. Now I'm I'm now with Honeywell, so <laughs> I'm not sure. So basically, for Bosch, they're the ones designing most security gateways right now. Okay. Okay. So they have what they call security gateway, but we don't call them call them as IDS. It's basically a firewall. But I heard that there's already an IDS uh, for cars, but not yet like launch in the market. So yeah. currently, none of the car has implemented that particular solution. None of the Cars manufacturers have implemented those solution ideas and IPs on ECU. Uh, there is already. Act, uh, I'm not sure, but someone said that he was able to test one. Okay. But you know, it's not yet. That car didn't like run in the in the streets yet. Yeah. I'm not sure who actually. Okay. But as far as I know, Bosch is developing. I have actually one of their boxes from Bosch. I love Bosch, but I wasn't able to like you know. Uh, Played a lot on their firewall. I mean, just physically, hardware reverse engineering, no. But I was able to see how it was okay. uh, by that.
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then also how it can protect you from attack. Honeywell. You work at Honeywell now? Sure. Yeah, hi. Um, so, I mean, I have some idea about automotive and I have one question. So, okay, we, when we talk about automotive security and calls, we either take protocols which are generally available like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all those stuff. Or we talk only about CAN. Nobody talks about any other protocols like some IP most or anything. Hmm. Is it that there is no research going on in those protocols or like maybe CAN is just easily available? Uh, there's also a research going on for FlexRay. So FlexRay, uh, you could actually do a man in the middle for FlexRay as well. Uh, there's a new write-up today. I'm sorry, I haven't uh, added it to my slide, but I'm supposed to. If you haven't like it reminded me, I'm supposed to add that one. But you know, someone was able to do a can in the middle through FlexRay and control the steering wheel. Okay, imagine controlling the steering wheel. So this is not a can protocol. It's yeah, called FlexRay. I, I, I understand that. I mean, the critical systems are on FlexRay. Or yes. at least high bandwidth system. That's right. So that's why we are only focusing on CAN, like all the issues that you said. Mostly they were either in Bluetooth Wi-Fi or in CAN. I have not seen any public disclosure of issues that are in FlexRay, most or some IP, nothing. There is already a public disclosure for Audi about FlexRay. Okay. okay, so I may have missed that. Yeah, so basically, uh, all I can really tell you about good things is that there's a lot of things going on on the car hacking village in DEF CON. Yeah. It's not just about CAN, but you know, it's easier for us to you know, give a demo as a POC only. Yeah. But there are a lot of things going on for car bug bashes, reverse engineering as well, and then um, IoT for telematics, and then other uh, uh, protocols, so Flex Ray, and then there are a lot actually, even the OBD2, there it has certain pinouts for it. But, you know, CAN bus is like the easiest thing that you could do. Even planes have CAN bus. Even, um, even satellites have CAN bus. But, because, uh, Will Corona actually confirmed that to me that he was able to see the first CAN bus as well. So, if you know Will Corona, he's like the, uh, not Corona, Corona. <laughs> so, um, he was the one who talked about freaking elevators in DEF CON. Okay, uh, one related question. So, I understand that these are protocols and at some point protocol level issues will be fixed by either platforms like Autosar or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, do we actually look into application implementations which are beyond the definition of protocol? Like any key management issues, authentication issues? Mm -hmm. I mean, is there any research going on in that area also? Okay. Yeah, there is an automotive security research group now. And they talk about you know security aside from offensive. Yeah, because I mean anything those data becomes uh, implement implementers proprietary stuff. Right? They don't disclose what packet in uh, what data in the can bus means what it is. Yeah, so you have to figure it out yourself. Yeah. So is there any standardization or something like OBD has defined some of the services, but still not most of. Them. So then there has to be some way for researchers to actually explore how to. Understand the data that is going in between. Right? Okay. So, is there any effort going on in that side? Yeah, automotive security research group. They do like that. They have a lot of sessions about that. Uh, there's no automotive security research group in India, but there's one in London, in the US, and Detroit, and then there's one in Singapore. So they, but for Singapore, they didn't talk about that. Usually, it's all about creating their own car in a box. I also have my car in a box at home. So that's usually the focus of automotive security research groups in Singapore. But if you want to dive into that, more research about that, in Detroit, they really do those kind of things. I mean, I've listened to some talks, and to tell you the truth, I don't even understand some of the things that they're saying. All right, welcome. I'm not sure if I answered your question correctly, but you know. Uh, so basically, automotive security is not my forte. Uh, I mean, like, my expertise, really. So I just have experience with car bug bashes. So that's the reason why I have, like, you know, some say in some POC. But I've seen some attacks that I can't discuss for NDA purposes. Yeah, but security 
can't really help you with that. Yeah. Yeah. No more questions. Uh, thank you for your time, and I hope you learned something. Thank you.